Yep. See, that was nice. Thank you so much. Good morning. Good morning. What, a, what a wonderful crowd we have on this uh, uh, Palm Sunday for our early service. <clears throat> this is a nice problem to have. Uh, I need to tell you that when the palms are blessed, not only are these palms blessed, but the palms that are pinned to you are blessed. So our ushers have told us that if you're not going to display this prominently on your front door, uh, that you take your blessed palm on your lapel home and turn this back in so we'll have plenty of palms for uh, uh, the 11 o'clock service. I'm not sure that was really an issue 
uh, 2,000 years ago when Jesus moved into Jerusalem, but it may have been, you know, you don't know. <clears throat> we uh, look around, and after uh, last night's basketball games, we have about three quarters of you who are, are, are smiling, you know. <clears throat> and then a few of us who are really, really nervous about this afternoon, but we'll see what happens. <clears throat> a couple of announcements this morning. We had a wonderful group yesterday that cleaned up the church. And one of the things that was discovered is that our big altar vase, which is behind the altar, is missing in action. So we don't know where it has gotten to, but if you know where it is, if you could get it back to the sacristy, that would be wonderful. So we can have it for uh, Easter and for all the activities that will take place during Holy Week, so that would be great. We have uh, an Easter egg hunt this afternoon beginning at 12.30. Lunch will be served, and so we are inviting all of our children to come for that. We'll have a lot of children, I'm sure, here at 11 o'clock. If you're in high school or middle school and would like to help, uh, it would be most appreciated uh, by Liz. <clears throat> One thing that I do need to make note of, and this was a mistake in the newsletter that was, uh, the, the notice that was sent out, um, it says that for Easter, we will have a service at 11 o'clock. We're actually just having two services, a sunrise service at 7, Easter breakfast at 8. There's an insert in the bulletin this morning that we hope you'll fill out uh, that will uh, uh, just help the folks who are planning breakfast. The Easter breakfast will be at 8 o'clock, and then at 9 o'clock we'll have uh, the festival Easter service. There will not be a service at 11. Uh, we could do it, but we're not going to do that. And I uh, want you to make a note of that, and we'll have that in bulletins this week to make sure that that's clear. So glad to have members of the Garver family here today for the dedication. Uh, we welcome you and we welcome all of our visitors and hope that you will uh, uh, join us afterwards for Sunday School, for Faith Formation, and for a new member or a prospective member meeting with me at 10 o'clock. We're glad that you're here. Let us stand together for the Palm Sunday lit Liturgy. <clears throat> Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the Son of David. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Mercifully assist us, O Lord God of our salvation, that we may enter with joy upon the contemplation of those mighty acts whereby you have given us life everlasting. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Palm Sunday Gospel for this year is written in the Gospel of St. Mark. When they were approaching Jerusalem at Bethpage and Bethany near the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, Go into the village ahead of you, and immediately as you enter it, you will find tied there a colt that has never been ridden. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Just say this, the Lord needs it and will send it back here immediately. They went away and found a colt tied near a door outside in the street. As they were untying it, some of the bystanders said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told them what Jesus had said and they allowed them to take it. Then they brought the colt to Jesus and threw their cloaks on it, and he sat on it. Many people spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut in the fields. Then those who went ahead and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our ancestor David. Hosanna in the highest heaven. And then he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything as it was already late, 
he went out to Bethany with the twelve. Here ends the reading of today's gospel. At this point, we're invited to raise up our palms. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. We praise and thank you, O God, for the great acts of love by which you have redeemed us through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. On this day, he entered the holy city of Jerusalem in triumph and was acclaimed Son of David and King of Kings by those who scattered their garments and branches of palm in his path. We ask that you would bless these palms these palm branches, and those who bear them, and grant that we may ever hail him as our Lord and King and follow him with perfect confidence through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our procession is victory chant. Let us pray. Sovereign God, you have established your rule in the human heart through the servanthood of Jesus Christ. By your spirit, keep us in the joyful procession of those who with their tongues confess Jesus is Lord and with their lives praise him as Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We'll invite the congregation to stand and we'll invite the Garber family to come forward as we dedicate the eternal flame at the Column Barrier. <clears throat> it's good to have all of you, good to have all of you here today for this. The congregation may be seated. <clears throat> Dear friends in Christ, today we give thanks to God and we seek God's blessings as we gather to dedicate this eternal flame in our columbarium to the praise and honor of God. Let us pray. Blessed are you, O Lord, our God, ruler of the universe. You made the whole earth for your glory. All creation praises you. We lift our voices to join the songs of heaven and earth of things seen and unseen. You stretched out the heavens like a tent. You divided the day from the night. You appointed times and seasons for work and rest, for tearing down and for building up. You blessed your people through all generations and guided them in life and death, Abraham and Sarah, Moses and Miriam, Isaiah and all of the prophets. Mary, the mother of our Lord, Peter, James, John, and all the apostles, 
and all the saints and witnesses in your church of ages past in whom your spirit spoke and moved. As we celebrate the gift of this eternal flame, we thank you for all the ways you continue to bless us in this wonderful congregation, for all the good works we are privileged to do in our community, our synod, and our world, for the opportunities we have to enrich the lives of young people and continue to challenge and encourage our adults in this place. For this columbarium, which will be a holy spot for members and friends to remember their loved ones and to anticipate the day when we will all be together in your love. May the light of this flame remind us that you are the light of our world and that you guide and direct us through day and through night, always calling us to be home and to be with you. Bless now this eternal flame Use it to enrich our lives as we worship here and to remind us of those saints who have gone before us and have been blessings to us. In the name of Christ our Savior, amen. We are so grateful for your presence here and I uh, am privileged to have known Peggy very well. If you were, if you were here during the time that uh, Peggy was here, you couldn't help but know her. She was always here. She was always doing good works in this congregation. I was telling Fran earlier today that uh, my earliest memory of, uh, of Peggy was <clears throat> that uh, the youth, I believe probably our lay assistant and our uh, music person up there were two of the ones, two of the ones who probably talked me into doing something in a Christmas pageant that um, was a bit embarrassing. Uh, you know, youth can kind of talk you into anything. And I remember after it was over, Peggy came up and she put her arm around me and she said, you know, Pastor, you don't have to do everything that the youth ask you to do. I think it involves singing a song and you can imagine how that went. You don't have to do everything that the youth, or for that matter, anyone asks you to do. And I've remembered that as a boundary, you know, that uh, if somebody asked me to uh, get on stage and dance, even before I hurt my knee, I'm probably not going to do that. And I think about Peggy and her permission for that. This beautiful flame will be um, a testament to God's love, to God's light in the world and we are grateful for it. Thank you so much. <laughs> and we will now hear from uh, Deacon Liz with Let's Talk. Yes, I invite the children forward for the children's message. All right, come on. Then you can go back and play, Luz. Ooh, yes, feel free to come and join us. We have, we have lots and lots of sweet young people. And we're going to talk about good stuff this morning. Look at all these uh, good-looking grandchildren. I love it. All right. Colby, you can just... Oh, Colby. Okay. All right, Colby. Colby, you can Okay. All right. I mean, that, that's great. You know, this, this talks about the bond that Colby and I have together. Right? So, friends, who do you think we're going to talk about today? Jesus. Jesus. We're going to talk about Jesus this morning. How many of us love parades? You can raise your hand. Oh, look at all these people who love parades. Who doesn't love parades? That I am so glad that there are people out there that don't love parades. Because it's not my favorite. What? Why? Well, because you have to sit and wait on something, and you have to kind of sit still. I'm not great at that. I'm not great at sitting still. You need a ride, but it's awesome. Yes, and normally it's cold when there are parades. Like, why do you want, why do you want to go sit in the cold? I don't understand. But today, look, buddy. Woo! Palm Sunday is one of Miss Liz's favorite Sundays. 
So I might not love parades, but I love me some Palm Sunday. It look, it's like you're between two ferns and you like come out. Yeah. Does anybody know why we have Palm Sunday? Gracie? Well, Pastor John read to us in our gospel reading, he read to us about how he, yes, Gus, Gus, sorry. Um, he, uh, it's when he went to Jerusalem and everyone was celebrating with palms and it was great. You are correct, Cole. You are correct, Gus. Yes, Delaney. Oh, that is a good point. So at the end of Palm Sunday, and we wait one year, and then we, Colby, you, he can go to his Nana. It's fine. There he goes. Hey, if you ever need a babysitter, we found you a good one. Um, so at the end of Palm Sunday, Delaney says, when Lent is over, then we keep the palms. We let them dry out. And the palms we burn so that we can put a cross of ash on your forehead for the next Lenten season. Today, Pastor John read to us from one of the Gospels and told us all about how Jesus tells his friends, who were the disciples, go and get a donkey. No, a colt. A colt, a donkey, it could have been in either, but you know, it was three miles from the Garden of Gethsemane, all the way to Jerusalem. And so when he tells the disciples to go get two, or to go get a donkey, comes back with the donkey, and Jesus rides the donkey into Jerusalem, and he is celebrated. It's like a cool parade. So they're dropping, they're dropping palm fronds, they're dropping coats, so that Jesus could actually not touch the ground. His robes not touch the ground. The donkey's feet not touch the ground. And Jesus goes into Jerusalem and is celebrated. Then what happens at the end of the week? Well, Jesus is crucified. And so he is welcomed warmly at the beginning of the week and at the end of the week is crucified. Jesus was God's king, and what we can remember today is that Jesus calls us to do many and various things. Sometimes they're not big things. Sometimes it's being kind to some, someone or showing someone that you care and love. Sometimes it's bigger things. And just like the donkey, sometimes we're called to do small things that make big impacts. And so, we can remember today that Jesus did that too. And Jesus wants us to do that. Small things with big impact. And so, as we leave here today, we are reminded that we go and Christ goes with us. Lucy, where's Jesus? Is Jesus in our hearts? That's right, and we show how much we love God and Jesus by our actions and our love, and we do that a whole lot. And so as we begin this Holy Week, remember, it never takes a lot to do small things with big impact. You think you can remember that? Oh, I think so. You think they can remember that? Well, they look pretty smart to me. Well, how about it? Let's pray. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Dear good and gracious Heavenly Father, we give you thanks this day for all that you give us, but especially for reminding us that your Son comes for us and he has sacrificed for us. Lord, let us do small things with big impact. Let us impact not only our churches, but our community and those in need. Lord, we ask your blessings on this day. We ask your blessings on these young people, and we ask your blessings on this church, this congregation, and our community. Because, Lord, it is in your name, in Jesus' name we pray. Can I get an amen?
All right, friends. So take your palm fronds and uh, we've got some bags and we can share bags. They have bulletins in them and crayons and we have more bags, so I'm happy to give you more. All right, Lucy, you ready? Delaney is going to take you. Look. Christ did not act to attain status and glory, but was obedient to God even to the point of death. Following Christ's example, we do not seek personal status or glory, but care for others as God cared for us in Christ's death. Reading from the second chapter of Philippians. Let the same mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus, who though he was in the form of God, did not regard equality with God as something to be exploited, but emptied himself, taking the form of a slave, being born in human likeness, and being found in human form, he humbled himself and became obedient to the point of death even death on a cross. Therefore God also highly exalted him and gave him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bend in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue should confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Word of God, word of life. Today is one of those days that we have been waiting for. After nearly 40 days of Lenten preparation, today Jesus makes his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. You remember as we have been reading Mark's gospel this year, <clears throat> that Jesus' ministry began way out in the country, in the rural areas of Galilee. But all along we have known where Jesus was headed. He was moving steadily, faithfully towards the holy city, towards Jerusalem. And so today he arrives there. And I hope you noticed what St. Mark says that Jesus did in order to enter the capital city. What does he do in order to do that parade into the metropolis, to occupy the throne that was so rightfully his? Mark says that Jesus got everything started by having two of his disciples go and get a donkey, a colt. That's right, that was the first thing to be done. And Mark, if you notice the reading, Mark takes up fully half of this passage today in talking about getting a donkey. The great Presbyterian preacher Thomas Long says that Mark never tells us which of the two disciples were chosen for this glorious task, but this is what he says. Don't you wish, don't you hope that James and John were the ones who were chosen for the donkey detail? You know, the two who had just hours earlier, said to Jesus, grant us to sit one at your right hand and one at your left in all of your glory. Wouldn't it be wonderful poetic justice if Jesus had said to James and John, who were known as the sons of thunder, 
If Jesus had said to James and John, I want you to, the ones who were so concerned about glory, I want the two of you to go to Donkey Max, nothing too fancy, low mileage, plenty comfortable, because I got a tough week ahead of me. I want the two of you to go and get the donkey. That's your job for today. Isn't it glorious to be a disciple of Jesus? Here Jesus is about to go toe-to-toe with the principalities and powers of darkness. He's about to be lifted up on the cross, drawing all of humanity to himself. He's about to triumph over sin, death, and the devil. And he asks the disciples, do you have any idea where I can get something to ride in on? This is not one of the more inspiring stories about what it is to be a disciple. Not that we should be too surprised by all of this, because if you've been following us in Mark's gospel, you know that in this particular gospel, the disciples don't always come off looking so great. In Mark's gospel, the disciples are always misunderstanding They are always befuddled and a bit confused. And so here, with just one week to go, with all the big stuff that is about to happen, Jesus trusts the disciples with a monumental task, finding him a donkey. Although, as Liz reminded the children, If it were not for that small task, then all the things that we celebrate in this Holy Week, they wouldn't have gotten started in the right way. There wouldn't have been a triumphal Palm Sunday entrance into Jerusalem. There wouldn't have been any hosannas that were sung. No palm branches waved. Things would have been very different indeed. And so today, Mark thinks the most important thing for us to remember is that those disciples were faithful in what Jesus had asked them to do. They did what Jesus commanded. They found a donkey at the last minute, and they made sure that the Son of God was welcomed as he came into Jerusalem. Not to put too fine a point on it, but I would say that you and I are a lot like those early disciples. We don't always get it right, do we? We are not always front and center when it comes to faithfulness and fidelity. We also don't often make headlines. You and I are much more called to prosaic, mundane tasks. I watch what you do. You are the ones who make a chocolate pie and take it over to someone's house when there's been a death in the family. You're the one who sits beside someone who is going into the hospital and squeezes their hand during the prayers and says afterwards, I want you to know that we'll be praying for you this week. You are the ones who bring cans of string beans when we have a CCM food drive as we do often during the year. You're the one who drops your check in the mail faithfully You're the one who changes the pyramids to make sure they're the right color, and goodness knows they will change a lot over these next seven days. You're the one who brings the eggs that are stuffed with candy. You're the one who tries to make it to choir practice each week. You're the one who prepares a Sunday school lesson the very best that you can. You volunteer to serve on councils and committees. You write notes to shut-ins. You volunteer at Samaritan's Table. That's what you do. And this, of course, is not to even mention all the things you do at home with your family. 
and in your neighborhood with your friends who you love. You do all of the small things. Small things that are in fact fulfilling the will of God. In a lot of ways, you are like John the Baptist. You are preparing the way of Jesus. You are doing the things that must be done before Jesus makes his full entry into the world. You are the heart and the hand of Jesus in this place. You get things ready for the coming of the Lord. When I was in seminary, I preached one Sunday morning in Saluda, South Carolina. I'm going to tell you, if you're looking for a place in the absolute middle of nowhere, and I'm from the middle of nowhere, but if you're looking for some place that is really in the middle of nowhere, you want to go to Saluda, South Carolina, if you can find it. But when I got there on that Sunday morning, I found a beautiful little church in a beautiful little town. It was a delight to be there and a delight to preach there. The little congregation, <clears throat> you're a good congregation to preach to. You engage me with your eyes most of the time. You engage me with your eyes. You're a good congregation uh, to preach to. And I can tell you this little church in Saluda was a good congregation. They were interested and engaged with what I had to say. And so after the service, before I was being taken to the nearest town that had a K&W cafeteria, that's just what you did in those days, I remarked to a small group of parishioners, I said, what a great church, this is a wonderful place to preach. And one of the older women who was standing there said, you know, my grandfather made that pulpit in his workshop. She said, I remember when he made it, he went out one spring and he gathered the walnut boards and he carefully planed them and he rubbed them smooth with his own hands. And I realized in that moment that the effectiveness of our preaching in that place, whatever sermons were heard and lived out in the life of that congregation, they rested on the quiet, almost forgotten efforts of a man, long since dead, who had worked late into the night, labored lovingly after he had finished a long day work, labored down in his basement workshop, finishing up a pulpit that had borne the weight of preachers for many years. I think of that as a parable of the way God works in the church. You are the ones who build in so many ways. You are the quiet ones who build the foundation for God to do God's work in this place. Think of all the people who have been touched by your efforts and your energy. Not just here, but literally around the world. What a good thing. What an important thing you do. In this holiest of weeks, let me, for all the preachers who have come before me, and for all the pastors who will come after me, let me tell you, thank you for what you have done for Christ church, for the difference you have made. And for the difference you will continue to make for the glory of God. Thanks be to God. Amen.
hidden over there? Ah, oh, yes, good, very good, you snuck them in. Please remain standing now for the order for confession and forgiveness. Blessed be God, the one who forms us, Jesus who bears the cross, the spirit who makes our joy complete. Amen. In this holy week, let us bow before God in humility confessing our sin. Steadfast and faithful God, you have revealed the ways of justice, yet we fail to follow you. We are overwhelmed by the world's violence and suffering. We are afraid to risk what we have for the sake of others. For the harm we have caused, known and unknown, forgive us. For the unjust demands we place on others and your creation, forgive us. For the ways we turn away from you and our neighbor, forgive us. Lead us back to you and set us on the right path. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior, amen. In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us, and for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the people of God in Christ now and in every time, let us confess our faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. 
he descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Trusting in God's promise to reconcile all things, let us pray for the church, the well-being of creation, and a world in need. Please sit or kneel as able. As we are uh, preparing our hearts for prayer, uh, let me give you some updates. We are, first of all, so pleased that Preble Hendrickson is back with us in worship after surgery a couple of weeks ago at Duke Eye Center and uh, is well on her road to recovery and recuperation. Preble and Ed, good to see you all here. Um, Diana Bentley uh, needed to go back into the hospital for a procedure following lung surgery. Uh, the procedure to remove some fluid from the lungs was very successful and uh, she is at home resting and I spoke with Howard this morning and he said that they would be uh, watching us and worshiping with us uh, on YouTube this morning. Uh, Bob Hill is also recuperating and recovering. Uh, Bob had uh, pledged to try to uh, be here at the 11 o'clock service today. I don't know whether he will make that or not. He may have been leaping up from his chair last night during the basketball game, so I'm not sure how that will go, but he is well on the way to recovery as well. Let us pray. Blessed one, today the church sings glad hosannas as we enter Holy Week. Prepare us to bear witness to Christ's suffering and death, which he endured for our sake. Gather all of your people around the cross and comfort us with the hope and promise of the resurrection. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Establish peace and justice among the nations. Hold to account any with authority to judge others. Grant that courts, legislatures, and local governments will serve your people with integrity, compassion, and honesty. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. We pray, O Lord, that you would bring hope to any who feel forsaken or forgotten. We ask this day that you would reunite families that are enduring separation of any kind. We pray for all who are incarcerated, institutionalized, or in foster care, that they may know your love and feel your closeness. We pray, O oh God, especially this day for those who are recuperating from surgery, for Preble and for Diana and for Bob. We pray for those who are dealing with grief we pray especially for the families of Pastor Mike Fry and the families of Pastor Earl McCombs. We ask, O oh Lord, that in our circle of friends, our family, our neighbors, that any who are dealing with difficult times, that you would give them the comfort and the promise of the Holy Spirit. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Accompany us on the remainder of our Lenten journey, God of grace, and receive the prayers of our hearts through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Let us stand together. <clears throat> Following his resurrection, the Lord Jesus breathes peace upon his disciples. We share in this peace of Christ in the church today. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. Please greet those around you.
It, uh, it goes without saying that after I was so effusive in my praise of this congregation uh, that we practice open communion here, which means if you are visiting with us, you are invited, and more than invited, you are welcome to receive communion today, and we certainly hope that you will come forward. I, I see that uh, our bell players uh, have arrived, manifesting themselves up there. I should ask, because this is a different kind of a Sunday, are they playing during communion, or are they playing as a postlude? So, these folks who work so hard, if you would have a seat during the postlude time, just to appreciate the, uh, the bell performance this morning, I know that would be appreciated by these faithful bell ringers. Let us pray. You may stand together. Jesus, you are the bread of life and you are the host of this meal. Bless these gifts that we have gathered that all people may know your goodness. Feed us not only with his holy food, but with a hunger for justice and peace. We pray this in your name. Amen. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks. Broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it for them to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered as one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray now as Jesus taught. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you are communing with us at home or if you've received the elements as you came in this morning, you may take those as these words are said. This is the body of Christ given for you and this is the blood of Christ shed for you. Remember that Jesus invites you to this table. So come eat and live. You may be seated.
come, his righteousness, he humbled himself and carried the cross. Love so amazing, love so amazing, Jesus Messiah. Let us stand together. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Now receive this benediction for this holy week. The God of glory, Jesus Christ, name above all names, and the spirit who lives in you, bless you now 
and forever. Amen. Our sending song is Hosanna. We invite you, following the sending song, to sit. As a matter of fact, just on a, on a whim, why don't we sit now? The Holy Spirit has spoken to my heart and has told me that it is time for, let me think, Sally Peterson to deliver our council communicator. The Spirit moves in mysterious ways. Sally, it's good to see you. I told him I'd stand back here and wave my arms to see if he'd remember. <laughs> it worked. Good morning. Good morning. Just a couple of items from the council. Um, first of all, we want to thank everybody who helped yesterday on the cleanup day. We had many hands, which made light work, and fun was had in the process. Uh, summer camp at Luther Ridge is June 16th through the 22nd. I know Miss Liz has talked about it quite a bit. We have uh, almost 40 kids signed up uh, to go. Uh, the ELCA Youth Gathering in New Orleans is July 15th through the 22nd, and we have quite a few kids going to that as well. Uh, day camp is July 29th through August 2nd, and services uh, this up and coming week for Holy Week, Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, all services are at 6.30. Uh, and then sunrise service next Sunday at 7 a.m., breakfast at 8, and the festival service is at 9. So there will be no 11 o'clock service next week. Um, and then mark your calendars for the endowment dinner, another important date to put on your calendar, which is April 21st at 5 p.m. Um, there's a, a dinner, but there's no cost to the dinner, and there's a lot of neat items up for auction. And come and support that great cause. And then the second phase of the columbarium is now installed. If you've not had a chance to see it, please do so. And thanks to all uh, those who have helped make the columbarium happen. happen. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll uh, uh, let you remain seated as we sing Hosanna and then listen to the postlude and then do the dismissal. Oh, my God. 
right there on the screen. You ready? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.